Our gospel readings today come from Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 36, and Mark chapter 15, verses 33 through 39. I don't know if you noticed this, but I think Andy, uh, who did our time with young disciples, did an amazing thing today. My guess is a lot of our little ones at home, when they saw him walk up with that bowl of tomatoes, said, I'm glad this is virtual. He can't make me eat the, these things from where I'm at. So, Andy, uh, you found a way to make our young ones appreciate virtual rather than uh, public worship. So, a uh, good job in this time. Mark 14, 32 through 36. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began, to de- and, to ga- and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. And then Mark 15, 33 through 39. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I imagine that when you hear these scriptures read, some of you might worry, Oh no, our minister has lost it. He thinks it's Holy Week again. This COVID thing has gotten to him. While it is always a possibility that I've lost my mind, the choice of today's text isn't because it centers around Holy Week events. It's because it shows us pictures of Jesus, how he dealt with something that we all need to deal with, especially now. Fear is something that plagues all of us. Some of us are really afraid of this virus, really afraid of what could happen if we caught it. Some of us are afraid of it for someone else. There is someone we love whose age and health background means if they catch it, there's not a whole lot of hope. And even others of us are afraid that this virus could take away some of our favorite things about life. Things like freedom, economic prosperity. Over the next few weeks, we are going to walk into the subject of fear. Not every Sunday. We have some special Sundays coming up where we have some other things planned. But we're going to keep working our way back into this subject of fear over the next few weeks. We're going to look at different biblical pictures of fear. The Bible has a lot to say about fear, and it doesn't have just one instance or one direction. It's complex, because our fears are complex too. We're going to be asking ourselves, how does God meet us in our fear? What does God call us to do? And the biggest one, why do we have fear? Why is this something that commonly tears us up? Now, I know that some of you are joining us as an escape. 
that you appreciate being able to come to these virtual worship services and for an hour not think about fear. Because it seems everywhere else fear is created. We have fears in our thoughts. The news creates fears. And the way we have to live right now also creates fears. I get that. I get that you might rather this was a place where we didn't talk about fear. But what I want to say is that if our faith makes sense of, at all, it can't only make sense in the good times when mostly things are going well. Our faith has to make sense in the worst of times and we have to walk into subjects like fear and say, God, what do you have for us here? So my invitation to all of us is to walk into fear today. Whatever your fears are, those deep-seated places that you normally don't walk towards, those places that you're not even honest with yourself about. Walk into those places and see if God doesn't have something for you. Our two texts today give us a picture of two different times, related times, but different times, where Jesus was afraid. And I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the picture in the Garden of Gethsemane. But I wanted to include both of these pictures because in both of them, we see Jesus dealing with fear. As we have been deeply disturbed by this season living with COVID-19, I want you to think about how disturbed the disciples must have been as the, they see Jesus to the point where he can't walk, to the point where he can barely function because he is so fearful of what is ahead. Wasn't this the guy who always had it held together? Wasn't this the one who always saw his way around unanswerable traps thrown at him by his enemies? Wasn't he the one that always had a miracle up his sleeve? And now, it seems like he's coming apart. Think of how distressing that would have been for his disciples. Think how out of the ordinary Jesus must have seen. And what does he do when he's like this? He returns to Scripture. There are several Old Testament quotes in these passages. Even Jesus, God in the flesh, during his worst times, defines himself by what he sees in the Scriptures. And when he faces the worst experiences that he knows of, he runs back to Scripture to frame the situation by what is true. Now there are at least two things that we need to wrestle with as we see this. The first thing is Jesus engaged his fear and pain. Now, we all know those people who constantly whine about something. And most of us have kind of set out in life not to be one of those people. But sometimes in our attempts not to be those people, we shut off the reality of what's really going on inside of us. We aren't engaged. And when we do that, we aren't being strong. We're in denial. We aren't following Jesus, we're being arrogant. This is nothing to celebrate. Jesus knew what he was facing, and his identity, deeply understood through Scripture, allowed him to move forward in his worst moments, engaging the worst things that he could imagine. So a question for us, how do we define ourselves? Do we define ourselves with anything that can be taken from us? Do we see and understand ourselves through the narrative of Scripture, defining ourselves as God define us, defines us? Or do we find, define ourselves differently? There is something out there that is big enough, awful enough to rock anybody's world. Maybe you haven't met your thing yet, but it exists. 
And my experience is that most of us have at least one experience with that in our lives. I think often of the people that were forced to retire when they didn't want to. Uh, we not only see that with athletes, but we see that in business and academics and other places. That people who have spent their whole lives uh, doing this one thing, this thing that they have uh, placed all their identity in, I'm the one that can do this like no other. And then it's taken from them. And often what we see after that is these gifted, powerful people not live out life so well after that. When we place our identity in anything but God, of being a child made in the image of God, forgiven and loved by God, we can have experiences that take that identity away. In both of our texts, Jesus cries out to God. In the garden, he begs the Father for a different way. And while it is so tempting to jump to what he said next, we need to stay there for a little while. Jesus asked his Father to change stuff. Father, I know we are heading this way. Can we do this differently? During this time with COVID-19, we need to engage the reality of it. We need to spend time praying, asking God that this virus would come to an end. And my guess is that if we did that, if we took that seriously, that God would not only do stuff about that in our lives, but he would do other transformations too. It will grow in us a care and compassion, not only for our neighbors and people in our city and our country, but God will show us care and concern for people beyond our borders, a love that is beyond us. That's my experience with prayer. That's my experience with people who are really committed to praying. They might start because of this narrow thing. There's something going on in their life that they're worried about, or maybe they just start because they think they should start or whatever, and God just expands what he's doing in their lives. And their hopes and their dreams don't stay so narrowly focused. They get big. God does his transformational work within them. Then, after we deal with the request uh, for things to change, we do need to deal with what's next. Not what I want, but what you want. How many people in the world could you say that to? Not what I want, but you want, Mom. Not what I want, but you want, Honey. Not what I want, but what you want, Neighbor. My guess is that's a pretty short list for all of us. The only people we say this to are people where we have gone through stuff with them. Really difficult things, and they've proven themselves. God wants to have those experiences with us. God wants to show us through good th times and bad that he is the faithful God. So that when we're in terrifying situations, we can trust what he's doing. We can trust his call. Jesus had that kind of intimacy with the Father. And as he faced the scariest things he could face, he turns to the Father and says, but I trust you. My hope and trust is in you. Our current situation with COVID-19 creates these kinds of opportunities where God wants to show us that he's involved with us and that he cares about our situations. We need to pray for this thing to go away. But don't miss the opportunity to believe that whatever happens, God is in this and his way is the best. Our call, church, is to walk into our fears 
is to see what God has for us in them. To see that God is already in them waiting for us and to challenge them. Are you the real reality or is God? It's our call to trust in the God that is over all things, even our fear. Let us pray. Creator God, you knit us together. You know where we are whole and where we are broken. Meet us in our places of fear. Empower us to follow Jesus' example, engaging the intimidating things that surround us because of our greater trust in you. We ask for you to solve the nightmare of COVID-19. As you have so many times, provide the wisdom and means to our scientists so that they can figure it out and provide treatments and a vaccine. As we wait, help us to be a people of hope and trust, caring for the needs of others as well as our own. We pray for those in our church that are suffering. Meet them in their places of pain and bring them back to health. As Jesus demonstrated, give us the strength to believe that your way is the right path instead of the one that we often prefer. Trusting in you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us at First Presbyterian Sundays at 8.30 and 10.55 or watch us on My 11 every Sunday morning at 9.